Hello guys, welcome to my third episode of the Beginner's Guide for Tower of God New World. And in today's video, I just wanted to talk about some resources we have in Tower of God New World and where it's best to spend them. So, the first one I want to talk about uh, is Alliance Coins. Okay, I just misclicked. Workshop Store, we go to the Alliance tab, and here we can spend the Alliance Coins. You get those by just uh, being in an alliance and opening the alliance uh, check-in boxes. You don't get that many, so it's quite hard to reach high numbers. You get some of them at times with events or like the uh, alliance expedition that's also running right now. If we go to the alliance, in the alliance events section, there is the alliance expedition and we get quite a few uh, alliance coins from here so this is a really nice source of them otherwise we just get them for from the usual check-ins as we see the numbers are not too high and these are uh, weekly so yeah not too bad but it's like it takes some time to reach 30k and more so in this shop I highly suggest waiting for until you get like S rank uh, uh, gear from the shop, and that is around I think floor 16 or so. This is the best way to sp use your uh, alliance coins, and if you wait until then, you will probably have already enough to buy a couple of pieces. Then, starting from floor 21, I think you, we also get the keys for the secret floor and the. Uh, rare Shinsu C Whetstone to upgrade uh, the, uh, the grade, or no, not the grade, but like the level of the ignition weapons. That being priced at 30k is way too expensive in my opinion. It doesn't make sense, it's almost the same as one piece of uh, S rank equipment. So I wouldn't bother with it for now, because we also get a lot of them from events. And I don't really see the need to waste 30k alliance coins on those. The keys could be useful, quite pricey, because still 6,000 uh, 6, for one of them is quite expensive. But they could be viable. Anyway, for beginners, just hold on to your coins until you can get S rank equipment and then just buy that. Okay. Uh, the second coin I want to talk about is the arena coins, or the arena coins, and for these ones, always buy the books, not the exclusive equipment uh, materials, until you have all the origin orbs maxed. You need uh, 19 books in total, if I remember correctly, uh, for uh, to max a single tree of the origin orb so you need 19 but one of them is already for free as a reward of upgrading the previous tier in the origin orb tree so you need to buy each one of those six times which is quite expensive but still it's the best use of your arena coins anyway once you've completed all the origin orbs you can go for the exclusive equipment material upgrade you need. So in this case, I bought the rare ones because they are the ones I'm lacking at the moment. And yeah, that's all also for from for this store. Then there is the uh, common crystal exchange shop. Here you can get both books and the gift selection chest. In this case, I would highly suggest buying these gift selection chests with the green crystals with the common crystals you you get you won't have a lot at the beginning actually none uh, because the way to get them is just by having duplicates of the R characters after you have uh, fully completed our limit breaks so you have them at full rainbow then when you get a copy of them you will get one crystal instead so Avoid buying the books, you will just use the arena coins for them. And this is an odd number, this is just one. And 
so as I said before, you need 18. So having this additional one will be more of an, a problem than anything else. It will just screw the calculations you need to do for, for these ones. You would have to then buy five times uh, each of these and just find another way to get the additional two. And 28 is quite expensive for a single book, so it doesn't make sense. It's better to wait for these gift selection chests. I won't really talk about the uncommon crystals and the rare crystals because in those cases, just take the SSR plus you need from for those and that's it, ignore everything else. That's my opinion, but yeah. Okay, that's all for Arena and Alliance coins. Now what I want to talk about are the soul crystals that you get when you summon uh, these ones, soul crystals. You can spend them on three things mainly, and they uh, they are limit breaks for your Shinsu links, then the origin orb tree, and then buying crystals for the tree, uh, tree essence facility. And what I suggest you guys to do is use the soul crystals only for limit breaking the Shinsu links until your main carry slot it is at A rank and all your other four slots are like B or B1. Once you reach that level, you can then focus on maxing one origin orb tree, the one related to your core element. So usually it's either yellow or purple and you want to get it maxed out. Don't spread your resources in multiple trees to begin with, just focus on one and get to the bottom of it to get this Shinsu's Blessing uh, item. This is extremely important later on because this will just increase all your Shinsu uh, links level by one up to five uh, based on how many origin orb trees you have maxed. And how that works is basically now we see that I have a link at 300 um, and we see that the, the stats I gain from 300 to 301. So every 20 levels, there is a, a block, like a, a Shinsu requirement to move on. And the stats you get will also be massively increased, as we can see here. And uh, that Shinsu blessing is really important because it allows you, when you start a game, like when you start a battle, you will get additional levels without any problem. So that's a massive power up that you get just from a plus one. Uh, because at that point I would have, instead of uh, 703,000, we will have 822,000. So it's a lot higher and that's just from a plus one. That would also allow you to have all these links just at the level below and get a really high return on your stats. That's really good. So first of all, max one of origin orb. Then you kind of need to see at which point you're, you're at. Like if you see that you're reaching the level cap on your Shinsu links, then by any means upgrade the main carry slot to like A2 and all the other ones to A. If you feel like you're still far away from the level cap, then keep fo focusing on the second origin orb tree. Don't go too far. Like you don't. Once you've unlocked the first uh, Shinsu's blessing, you don't need to push it to to complete the whole tree. You could even say, okay, let's focus on reaching these 50 accuracy node. Um, on the second element, then go back to upgrading the Shinsu links to A2 for the for the main carry and A for every single uh, every other one. And then, once you've reached that stage, I would highly recommend going for uh, maxing the second origin orb tree, and then identifying like a, a potential third element you like to build. If you still have don't have clear ideas, you can just aim for the plus 30 accuracy on all three of the remaining elements. 
and then once you have you, uh, once your ideas are clearer just move towards the plus 50 accuracy for that specific tree and then over time max all of them out because once you have the links at like A2 and A, you won't really need uh, to have them at like S or any higher because that's already quite an high level. And I would focus on maxing the origin orbs. They, they will get you a lot more value out of the soul crystal investment. Once the uh, origin orb is completed, at that point, I would say go for the main uh, link to S and all the other ones to A2. And then once you've, once you've done that, you can go to the workshop store, go to the gem tab. I don't know why they are in this tab, but if you go to the common crystal exchange shop, here we see we can buy int, dex, and strength crystals plus also the stat restoration ticket that allows you to roll back the upgrade you did or like the re-roll you did in the tree essence facility they are nice not that mandatory but they're they're nice to have so what you need to do is buy these with your soul crystals and then uh, aim to unlock the second wheel at least for the uh, of the of the of the type that your main carries use so it will be strength for Oakin, it will be uh, int for uh, yuan then for a Craptor, it will be dex uh, it will also be dex for kunran and it will be int for child and dorsey those are more or less your main carries so that's what you should focus on int uh, also applies to Evankel, which is a good uh, DPS unit to have, SSR plus DPS unit to have. Dex will apply to Viol, etc. So just upgrade them based on uh, the, the type of your uh, main carries. And just for now, focus on one, unlock the second row. If you feel like it takes too much, because it's really, really time consuming to unlock, to get all the nodes to three A's. By the way, you don't have to uh, get the right stats. Just focus on getting three A's and that's it. Because once you unlock the second wheel, you can then change the values. As you can see here, I have a B here as well. And it doesn't really matter at that point, you can change the first wheel stats without any problems because it, it will not lock your access to the second wheel. So priority is getting all nodes to three A's and then you can pick and choose which stats you need and have accuracy as maxed out as possible. Same thing for all of them. Then uh, once you've achieve that there is no clear timeline it will take you a lot of time it will take you a lot of luck unfortunately but once you've reached that then you are left with just upgrading the your shinsu your shinsu link limit breaks with your soul crystals that's the only thing you can spend your soul crystals on obviously while you are still trying to get to the second wheel in the tree essence facility once you are nearing once you're reaching the level cap by any means limit break those because that's the most important thing uh, but still at that point you only need to level to limit break the shinso links when you uh, are reaching the level cap you don't need to worry about it too much because the increase you get is really limited i cannot show you anymore but compared to the amount you get from a single level up it's really uh, not that impactful okay that being said that was pretty much all for the soul crystals and let's talk about other things like the astrolabe now we get these astrolabe keys every time we limit break a unit 
and the best way I think um, like the best nodes to upgrade are for sure link exp because there are not that many sources of link exp in this game the majority of it will come from the loot system so upgrading it will give you the highest results Shinsu uh, to me is less important than link exp uh, just because the Shinsu you get from the loot is not that high I mean the amount you get is really is really low and there is another source of uh, Shinsu that's probably way way better than than the loot and that is the uh, agency service center that we also talked about in another video <clears throat> so that's the reason why i think this is uh, of second importance as compared to link xp and the least important one uh, are the coins we have a lot of other sources like the mock battle and uh, in some events we get a lot of it from the trials uh, we get some coins so there are plenty of sources mm, so I would I would say this is the th least important of the three to get and also we get a lot of like coin loot chests from just almost everywhere we get a lot of them also from the black market so I think coins are the least valuable resource out of the three so that's what I would do but obviously, based on the stage of the game you're at, you might find different blocks. But still, since the Link XP source is pretty much limited to the loot, or at least that's where most of it will come from, I highly suggest you guys to upgrade it first. Then, another resource we have available is um the i misclicked again is the the how are they called data shards and in here you can basically upgrade the main stats of certain roles for your characters these roles are not like support tank etc they are more like the manwa roles so fisherman spear bearer light bearer scout wave controller and special uh, special position which is just guides anima and this guy <laughs> but yeah here my suggestion would be just to evenly level them putting more focus on your main uh, of the role for which you have uh, more characters leveled up like wave controller is a good one because we have a lot of main DPSs like Hiwa, Evankel, and Viol. Scout, not too important unless you have a main DPS Kiseya. Light bearer, usually we have supports in this category, so not really that relevant. Spear bearer, we also have some DPSs like uh, Rachel, Ethan, and Mashini. We also have a Craptor, Kunran. So there are plenty of DPSs in the spear bearer category. Fishermen, in this category, there are more or less like all-rounder characters. We see there is the Heart, Urek, and uh, Blood Road, which is a good one. But yeah, overall, this is not too important. Like the stats you get uh, are pretty low. It's important to note that from level 11, to level 12 like once you are to at level 11 you will get like a three percent in each of them so it's really a good uh, point because as we can see now we get just for a, a single level 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.5 so less than one percent but in level 11 you get three percent for each stat which is really massive so i would suggest taking all of them to level 11 uh completing it so getting all of them to level 12 as i have most of mine and then just focus again on some of the ones for your carries but again nothing major even if you mess up that one doesn't really matter the stats you get are, are pretty low 
Then the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, hammers. So those are the materials you use on your gear, on upgrading your gear. And it's important that you don't waste them on useless pieces for certain characters. And what I mean by that is that there are like obviously supports. You don't need to increase their crit rate and crit damage. That would be a slot too. You can just leave it at plus zero, it's fine. You will never need to touch it for most of the supports. Uh, also, accuracy might not be needed on the majority of the supports. Like in this case, it was uh, an error on my side that I brought it to plus two, but you don't really need to for most uh, supports if they do not rely on hits to apply certain debuffs or certain CCs. So that's one thing to take into account. There's also uh, four supports. Slot three will give both accuracy and evasion. That means that the evasion will be low and it's basically impossible for your support to have more evasion than the enemy's accuracy especially if you push high deficits. This means that this stat is basically worthless as well. You don't need high evasion to push the, um, the adventure mode. It could come in handy in PvP, but even then, not that important. I would say for supports, the most important slot is the slot 4. They give you just magic resistance and physical resistance. That's it. Then. Again, for tanks, this is also similar. So we take Karaka, for example. I max this evasion because in this case, evasion was like um, for tanks, this slot three is entirely evasion. So you get more uh, as compared to a split stat one that give you both accuracy and evasion. So it could come in handy, but even then, look, I have 557. Uh, and the enemies that I'm facing now in campaign, we can check it, but they should have around 575 or so. Let's just give a look. They have, no, okay, even more, 593. So that evasion from my side will really mean not much. So it's nice to have, but again, less important than having the resistances up. So I'm trying to, like I'm saying this only to have you guys realize that you don't need to upgrade all the four pieces for every single character. Just focus on the one that your character actually needs. I will have a video in the near future where I would show with you guys an Excel file with also which pieces you need to focus on for which characters. But for now, what I want to also say is that you don't need as you can see, as you see here, I took this piece to plus five, but getting a piece to plus five is extremely expensive. Like from plus four to plus five, the cost is similar to taking a piece from one, from plus one to plus 3.5, like half of level three. So it's really, really expensive. And I wouldn't advise you guys to bring the, the pieces to plus five at the beginning. Just limit yourself to plus, four maximum i would say plus three plus four and then just move on to the next piece for another one and keep it keep it this way i would not advise you guys to upgrade pieces of b tier you could start upgrading certain pieces of a tier rarity and above but even then uh, please just focus more on pushing the game with what you have and then upgrading the S gear uh, equipment because the stats you get are not that high like from from a plus zero to a plus five the change is really limited you won't feel it that much only the accuracy ones are important all other pieces not really because the stat, the main stats in every piece, like this 66,000 HP, 
from my experience and from what I saw, they do not scale with the link uh, EXP, with the link level. So they are pretty much worthless. Like 2,000 attack when you have 2 million attack is really nothing. If I take away this piece, just to show you guys, if I release it, I had 2018, now it should be like 2016, 2015. 2016. So as you can see, guys, it doesn't scale with the uh, sh uh, with the Shinso link level. So that means the main stat is worthless. All you really care about are like these uh, secondary stats or like these special stats like crit hit rate, crit damage rate uh, increase, magic resistance, physical resistance. Uh, evasion and accuracy hp defense and attack they mean nothing so don't worry uh, about those your main goals are just the secondary stats all right then again just one additional thing is that for your main carries like let's take for example hiwa i have everything on her at plus five is it really necessary? No, as I said before. All you really care about are the accuracy pieces. So yeah, okay, slot one and slot three are pretty much mandatory. Slot two, these give critical hit rate and critical damage increase. They are really good for DPS characters. So also this piece is pretty much mandatory, but you don't really have to worry too much. And then magic and physical resistance, this is in particular a range character. You don't really care too much about these stats, but for your main carries, it's okay to overinvest in them. It's fine. They are the units that will carry you the most. So by any means, just upgrade everything on them, but just on your supports and on your tanks, do not waste the resources upgrading useless pieces. And okay. Then that was pretty much all for the resources video that I that I had planned. So I see you guys in the next one that will be about team composition and positioning of the units. And I wish you guys a good one. Bye.